Today, more than 200 million people are unemployed. Two out of three youths in Europe can't find a steady job. And in the Middle East and Africa, youth unemployment is often two to three times higher than adults. To cut unemployment by half, significant employment growth will be needed in South Asia, the Middle East and Africa. Worldwide, millions of people struggle with underemployment, low productivity, uncertainty. More than 900 million workers live on less than $2 a day. We can fix this. Let's mobilize. We all have ideas. Let's bring them together, fill our knowledge gaps, and find real solutions. Let's communicate, collaborate, influence for the youth, for the poor, for the educated, for everyone. Let's help create jobs. What does a country need to do to create more jobs? For a long time, rapid and sustained economic growth was considered essential for job creation. In fact, in 1962, this guy, Arthur Melvin Oaken, an economist at Yale University, made a statistical connection between changes in unemployment rates and economic growth. To many people, that also meant that higher growth would mean less unemployment. And this led governments and aid agencies to focus on increasing GDP as a way to get people to work. Which sounds good, but it doesn't always hold up. Like when a low-income country supports capital-intensive projects such as, say, an aluminum smelter plant or a chemical processing facility. Even if they are profitable, they won't necessarily create a lot of jobs. And even if they do create jobs, will they be good jobs? Jobs that have a benefit beyond income, that are good for society and good for sustained growth? In countries with a lot of educated young people out of work, even rapid growth might not create the right kinds of job opportunities. Recent history shows that growth doesn't guarantee social cohesion. Take Tunisia. For years, it had the highest GDP growth in the region, averaging almost 5% year over year. But there have been cases like South Korea's, where leaders focused on growth and jobs simultaneously, and growth and jobs both skyrocketed. So when is a growth policy not enough? When is a job strategy needed? What do you think? What does your country need to do to create jobs? Help find the solution. Most people would probably agree that it's good to have a job. And with more than 200 million people unemployed, clearly the world needs more jobs. But is any job better than no job? What makes a job a good job? A job means different things to individual people. And some jobs may do more for a nation's economic and social development than others. It's not simple. From the individual perspective, does the job pay a fair wage? Is it stable? Are there additional benefits such as health care and insurance? Is it satisfying? No question, most people want those things. Unfortunately, there are a number of countries where jobs with social protection can be hard to come by and hard for businesses to create. But another aspect to a good job might be the value it has beyond the individual worker. What effect the job has on the economy and on society at large. For example, farming jobs can involve hard work conditions, have substantial variability in earnings, and often offer no formal social protection. However, these jobs can help lift people out of poverty, so they are potentially good from a development perspective. And in post-conflict countries, making sure young people are employed can also go a long way. Sometimes the individual, economic, and social aspects come together. A high-paying job in the IT sector of Bangalore is probably good for the person who holds it, but it is also good for India because it contributes to its economic development. But it's not always possible to bring all the goods together. So how should governments and policymakers confront these trade-offs? What does a good job mean in your country? What does a good job mean to you? There are a lot of people 
on this planet, and more than half of them are under 30. Right now, record numbers of young people are unable to find work. Of those youth who do have a job, hundreds of millions of them live on less than the equivalent of two U.S. dollars a day. And the pace of youth withdrawing from the labor force, not studying, idle, has been increasing. Youth unemployment and underemployment is a global crisis. In some regions, the situation is getting worse. According to some estimates, in South Africa, almost 75% of the unemployed are under age 35. To absorb young people entering the labor market, the Arab world needs to create 75 million new jobs in the coming decade. South Asia and Africa will need hundreds of millions more. The numbers are staggering, as are the consequences for the youth, for their families, for their communities, and for the future prosperity of their countries. The ripple effect is easy to see. What can be done to stop it? Are the policies meant to address adult unemployment the right policies to help youth? What do governments, civil societies, and communities need to do to make sure the population of the future can start to find more stability today? In a lot of countries, a large number of people are self-employed. Many are entrepreneurs. If every entrepreneur were to create even one additional job for someone else, the overall effect could be enormous. Sometimes, small businesses can grow fast. Take the Ethiopian shoe company Soul Rebels. It had just five employees in 2005. Now, by modernizing traditional shoe design, it has hundreds. Just think, global giants like Unilever and Sony began as small family enterprises with entrepreneurs at the wheel. But many of the self-employed in lower income countries are entrepreneurs by necessity rather than by choice. So what's the scope for policies to address their needs? Is the ability to be a successful entrepreneur simply something in someone's DNA? Or can it be taught? With the right policies, infrastructure, access to finance, and training, can growth entrepreneurs be made? And what about the entrepreneurs that are already out there running small businesses? How can we identify who has the potential to create more jobs and help them grow? What do you think? How can we foster entrepreneurship? <laughs>